Hey everyone, welcome to Iguana Gaming. I'm the Iguana, and today what we are going to do is show people how to start out in Ark Survival Evolved mobile version. So when you first pull up the game, this is the screen that you're going to see. And essentially, you have a few options here. Um, one of them is Play Arc. Another one is Join Online. Now, the Options tab just gives you gameplay options, which we will not go into quite yet. Um, that's going to be a little bit later. If you're just in here to play the game, um, the first thing that I'm going to have you guys do is click on Join Online. And when you click on that, you should see a menu that looks something like this. So this menu is basically a list of servers that you can join. There are a few different types of servers. So there are PvE servers where you can play against just the world. You don't have to worry about other people coming in and trying to um, steal your stuff. So there's no like player versus player action. Or you can join the player versus player servers where you do have that kind of gameplay going on. I highly recommend if you are just starting out playing on a PVE server, and preferably one that is listed here as easy or medium. Definitely don't try to hit the hard servers just yet. For now, I'm going to hit the cancel button, and we are going to go and look at the play arc option. So if you go back to this screen, you click play arc, that is going to let you join a single player game. The single player game, the first thing it's going to bring up is this menu your character selection menu. So when you go into the character selection menu, you have a lot of different options here. The one that it's on by default is going to be um, basic things like skin color, eye color, hair color, and so forth. So you can actually cycle through each one of these options, head, upper body, lower body, arms, and lower body, um, as in like legs, and then once you've done all that, you can then name your character by clicking on the little pencil icon in the upper right hand corner, which will bring up a menu that allows you to change your character name. Now, once you've done all that, you're going to want to hit done. Once you hit done, that is going to bring you to this spawn map. So what you want to do with this spawn map is select a region to spawn in. You have quite a few options here, um, but it's important to note that not all of these spawn areas are in fact equal. So when you have spawn areas, I would say I would go for one of the ones in the south. Um, those are going to be easier areas to start out in at first. There are fewer predators um, to come along and basically ruin your first time in Ark. So we are actually going to go ahead and start in spawn region south 2, which is right here. Okay, once you've selected that region, you can go ahead and click spawn new survivor. All right. And now that we have done that, we are now joining in the game. Hopefully this looks really good. Um, All right, once we have clicked that button, you will now see this screen where you are waking up in the game. Um, so you're going to be looking at your arm, scratching your implant, wondering what the heck is going on. And obviously it's gonna be a little bit weird. You're not sure what's happening yet. There is a lot of lore behind the art game. So I strongly suggest going and reading more about the original PC version of the game if you're curious about some of that and what goes into the implant that you have in your arm. So here we are, we have finally spawned in as you can see, and I think the first thing we need to do is collect stone. Um, luckily we are walking right up to a stone. So in order to move, you use your thumb on or finger on the left side of the screen. The lower left hand side acts as sort of like a controller dial, so you can just um, kind of move back forth side to side. And then on the right hand side of the screen, you can control where you're actually facing with your character. So using them together creates a really nice smooth movement. All right, so you walk up to a stone and when you have it in focus, you just tap to collect like I've just done there. All right, 
So luckily they do also give you like an in-game tutorial which will help. So what we're gonna do is just kind of follow that along for a moment. We're gonna go ahead and just punch this until we get some wood. There we go. All right, and now we need to collect a little bit of thatch. So we'll just keep punching the tree. Um, I'm pretty sure this is not actually how you get thatch. And it does do damage to you, so be careful not to punch too many trees while you're trying to do that. You also want to collect all of these bushes that are on the ground. Um, they do give you berries and items like that for food. All right. So now to access your inventory, let's see if I can get you to see it here a little better. There is a backpack icon in the upper left hand corner. So you're going to click on that. Um, so you have your first pursuit quest available on the left hand side here, the first tool. And it's already opened the crafting tab. If you want to go to the inventory, just tap the inventory here. And then the crafting here if you want to craft things. All right, so we're going to go ahead and craft this stone pick um, following along with the pursuit here for the single player game. All right, to equip it, all you have to do is tap and hold and then drag it to the item slot that you want. Okay, we can now close the inventory, clicking the X in the upper right hand corner, and now we have our stone pick available. All you have to do is tap on it here. Um, there is also an option, what may be happening for you is um, you may have this flow menu, and if that's the case, you see this little arrow on the upper right hand side, it's a little hard to see, but you can hold on that and then drag over, and then you can switch whatever you have equipped by using the flow menu. I prefer the hotbar layout, so I'm going to go ahead back into the controls which is this uh, gear icon up here, and tap that hotbar layout until it says on screen again. And I'm just going to apply that. So now I have all of my options down here on this hotbar. They're a little bit easier, I think, to get that way. All right, so now we're gonna hit a tree again. Um, it's a good idea to get some good resources right off the bat because you are gonna need those to craft items later on in the game. And it looks like we also have a level up. So I'm gonna go back into the inventory. Now there are a lot of options for stats to level up. Probably the most important ones are health, stamina, weight, and melee. Um, right now, I think weight is gonna be the most important. That's going to allow you to carry more items. So we're gonna go ahead and click that level up button. Excellent. So now you can see that our weight has increased now there is a big initial increase for whatever you choose to level up, but as you add levels into that stat, you will gain a little bit less over time. So the next time I go to add weight into this level, um, we will probably only gain 10 or 20 points instead of 30. Okay, so now that we've leveled up, we can also go to the Ingram menu, which is this little um, shape up here in the center of that upper left hand corner with the little 10 on it. And that means that we have 10 Ingram points. So we can choose to learn any one of these three items since we are level two. I'm gonna go ahead and learn how to make a campfire because that will be helpful for cooking and for staying warm. Okay, go ahead and put this away. We are going to gather a few more berries. All right, we are still following the pursuit. So back into the inventory. We're going to drag some berries onto the hotbar. You can eat them directly out of the inventory by clicking the eat button that shows up when you tap on the berries. And in the meantime, you can also eat them from the hotbar by just tapping on that item in the hotbar. We are also thirsty, so I am gonna come down here and see if I can't get some water. I don't want to go too close to those. Those are what we call Nidaria, and they are, they're basically jellyfish that shock you. So you want to avoid those if you see them. I'm not sure why they've spawned this close. Um, you don't normally see them in the inlets here. All right, we have yet another level up. I'm gonna go ahead and collect the stone there. 
So I'm going to go ahead and select weight again. And this time we only got 20 points put into that, as you can see. All right, so we need to collect materials to make that campfire. This is a parasaur. Um, they are completely not harmful. So they are safe to be around. Trikes are also safe, which you can see over here. I'll go ahead over this way so that you can see them. Um, this zone is particularly great for spawning in. It's not a super dangerous zone, which is super helpful. Hello, trike. You don't want to hit a trike, though, because they will turn around and attack you. Um, so just tips for surviving right away. Don't hit the trikes. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit the rock here. Because we need some flint to make this campfire. Alright, and we may also need a little more thatch. Got to be careful not to get too close to that trike. And then we will probably need more stones. All right, I'm gonna pick up a couple extra just in case. All right, there we go. So now we can go back into the crafting menu, click on this campfire, and down in the lower right hand corner, it will show you exactly what you need to make this. So in this case, we need eight thatch, one flint, 10 stone, and two wood, which is perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and make this campfire. All right, now we can go back to inventory, tap on the campfire, and you see this little place button in the lower right hand corner. So now we can pick any place we want to go ahead and place this down. So you can kind of run around while it's still here. And in order to place the campfire, you just Stop for a second and tap the screen and it will place, which is perfect. So now in order to go into the inventory of the campfire, um, you do have this button in the upper left hand corner that's like an open backpack, which will allow you to um, access the inventory. Or if I click that little undo button, it will pick the campfire back up. Um, so if you make a mistake and you want to place your campfire in a different place, you can, for the first like 30 seconds, press that undo button and just pick it right back up. I'm actually pretty happy with this location. I think we're in a good spot. It's nice and safe. So I'm going to go ahead and put the campfire right here. And I'm going to leave it here this time. So I'm going to click that open backpack and put in just a couple pieces of wood. And now you can click this light fire button to actually light the fire. All right, so we have again completed this pursuit, which is awesome. So fires will keep you warm at night, um, especially when it gets cold. Sometimes the temperature does drop, not so much on these southern beaches, but on other parts of the map. When you go up north, for instance, it can get very cold. So campfires are a very useful tool to have when you're starting out in Arc Mobile. All right. This time, I think I want to level up a little bit of health because we are going to have to go and do a little bit of hunting soon. So now back in the Ingram menu, the next thing I want to know how to make is a stone hatchet. Those are really useful. Um, top tips for getting started is that the pick will harvest more thatch and flint. So thatch from trees and flint from rocks like that one. I'm not going to go out into the water to hit it, but um, hatchets are going to harvest more wood. So actually let's go into, yeah, you can also click and drag to move between menu screens. Okay, we still have, we still have enough materials, so we're going to go ahead and make this hatchet. All right. Now again, tap and hold, drag to the hot bar. And we are gonna go ahead and get this hatchet out. And now, as you can see, we are gathering a lot of wood and not much thatch, whereas with the pick, we're gathering mostly thatch and not a lot of wood. So the hatchet is really good for collecting stone and wood. And again, the pick is really good for collecting thatch and flint from trees and rocks. All right, so apparently the game wants us to do another pursuit. 
Um, it has marked an area on the map that it wants us to go to. So it wants us to find a dodo. And apparently there is a dodo somewhere in this area. We may have to cross, ooh, yeah, we may have to cross the water to get there. I'm gonna go ahead and dip in. All right, we should be okay. Those jellyfish are coming, but we are pretty quick and there's no sharks in the area, so we're safe for now. Now you do have an oxygen bar that shows up on that lower hood menu. And you just wanna be careful. If your oxygen runs out, you will start to drown. Yeah, so as you can see, those jellyfish were coming towards me. Um, so you just want to be really careful not to get too close to them. All right, so we have now located the dodo. It is right here at level 17, and it wants us to kill it. So I'm going to go ahead and grab out the hatchet. I love how it says it must be sacrificed. That's adorable. Oop, we have compies on us too. Compies can kill you. So I'm going to go ahead and, and hit those. There is an auto target feature on that I'm not sure I like. Where did the dodo go? Oh no. The dodo ran away. These compies got in the way. I'm going to go ahead and kill this compie. There we go. Alright, here's the dodo. So I'm going to keep hitting it with the hatchet. Um... A hatchet does work as a weapon, but a spear is better, and I'll show you guys how to make a spear in a minute. Okay, so now when it comes to harvesting corpses, um, a hatchet is going to give you more hide, and a pick is going to give you more meat. So in this case, it wants us to return to the campfire and cook up some meat. So we're also going to need some wood for that. I'll just grab it while I'm over here. There we go. These are silica pearls, by the way. They will be important later. All right, so we are gonna have to be really careful because those jellyfish are pretty quick. So we may run up this way a little bit to, um, just to avoid the jellyfish so that they don't try to eat our faces too much while we're crossing. All right. Yep, we should still be safe here. Yeah, I bet they're coming this way, but we can get across here before they can get to us. Alright, and these fish, um, these are coelacanths. If they look like this, they're not harmful. There are piranha in the game, so please be careful when you are swimming. Um, the water is generally not a good place to be. Yeah, we're fine. Those jellyfish didn't even notice us. All right, we're going to come back over here. That little um, indicator icon in the upper left-hand corner shows you where your destination is or approximately where your destination is, which is super helpful. We're going to go ahead and put some meat in here and just a little bit of the wood, and we're going to light that fire. All right. Now there is a timer on this so you can see exactly how long it's going to take for one piece of meat to cook. Um, it's about 20 seconds per piece of cooked meat. And this is a good way to feed your character. You can of course eat berries, um, but cooking meat is going to return more food. All right. So there are of course more pursuits that you can do in this game. Um, but for now, we are just gonna take this piece of cooked meat can we, there we go. Double tap will help to switch an item from an inventory. Um, so you just double tap on it and it will transfer into your inventory. If there are multiple items in a stack, um, this will pop up, which will allow you to choose how many items you want to transfer. In this case, I don't actually wanna transfer anything, so I can just click off the screen. So not hit the transfer button and it will cancel the action. All right, there we go. So now let's go ahead and eat one of these. And we've restored a bunch more food than we can get from berries now, which is excellent. And I believe we have a level up available, which I'm going to really quick go ahead and spend on health. Excellent. All right, so now we have two new pursuits available. 
Um, but for now, this is basically, I think this is going to do it for this episode. Um, please stay tuned. I am going to be continuing this beginner's guide series. Hopefully this was a good way to get you guys started in the game. There is going to be a lot more to come, more tutorial videos on what to do and basically how to gain experience and how to tame dinos and all of those things will be coming in future episodes. But for now, I think that's going to do it for this episode, guys. If you did enjoy, please remember to hit that like button. It seriously helps me out. And if you want to see more content like this, um, and if you want to follow the beginner's guide, you can, of course, subscribe. So I will catch you guys in the next one. Signing off. This is the Iguana.